So in this series of six videos, I'm going to show you how I've created these different text effects. I'm going to be starting with the impact font and the page size I'm using is A4. If you want to get similar results with the different settings, then you need to be working at the same scale. So let's get started. So in this example, we're going to introduce an image into our lettering. Um, I've done something similar to this before. I think last time I used a squirrel and we used the whole of the photo for the background and the squirrel's head was poking out the top. In this instance, I'm going to use a snake and we'll just make it so it looks like it's weaving in and out of the different letters. So the way I'm going to do this is we're going to come over. First thing we need to do is import our snake. I've already done that. I've got it over to the side. So we need to cut him out. So I'm going to zoom in a touch. So with my Bezier pen, I'm going to trace around the outside I've got B-spline on at the moment, which gives you uh, smooth nodes. Uh, we may have to do some fine adjustment at the end using the nodes tool. If you're not familiar with how to use the Bezier pen and the nodes tool together, then watch the video I've linked in the top right hand corner and that'll take you for everything. If you need to drag your canvas around, you can press down on the mouse wheel and then you can drag your canvas to the position you want and then you can just carry on creating your path. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to grab my nodes tool so we can do some fine adjustment. Um, at the moment, the stroke <laughs> is a little bit too big. So if we come down to the bottom here, we can uh, right click on our stroke width and we just bring it right down to a small. Oh, I know what's happened. I've probably I've still got triangle in selected at the top here. So what we need to do is just go in to our path uh, path effect dialog box and I've still got it here so if we just click on here and we've got power stroke we don't want the power stroke so with the power stroke selected I'm going to click the minus so now what we've got is our B spline applied so we need this to be a path so we can work on it with our nodes tool so the way I'm, I'm going to change it is to come up to path and down to object to path and that removes the path effect so now if we come up get our nodes tool We've currently still got a stroke on here. We could do with a little fine stroke. So I'm going to come down and let's go back to our fill and stroke dialog box. I'm going to change the width of the stroke just down to 0.1 and we get rid of our fill color. So we can come down, click on the X down the bottom here. So now I'm just going to zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to do some fine adjustments on our on our path just so it's going around our shape a little bit better. Just adjusting these till they better fit our snake. So now we're happy with the path that surrounds our snake. We can select our path, hold down shift, select the image. Then we can come up to object, down to clip and over to set clip and hide the background. So that gives us our snake to work with. We zoom out a little bit, we can drag it over and we'll leave it there. I think in the other image I've actually flipped it. So what we do is with it selected, we can come up to the top and we can flip it um, horizontally. So over on our letters here, I've used a gradient to give it the color range and I've used a drop shadow just to give a bit of definition around the edge. So first things first, let's, let's do the gradient. So with it selected, we can come to our fill and stroke. We've got it on fill and we can come over and give it a gradient. We select the top stop. What we can do is come over and get our gradients tool and then we can see our gradient bar. So we can hold on to one stop, put that at the top, grab the other stop and put that at the bottom. This stop will always be um, fully transparent so we can just increase that up so it's fully opaque. We can come over and Give it a nice green color. We click up here, give it a nice bright green. And if we go to the top stop, we want to give this a nice blue color. So we can drag it around to our blue. What color do we want? Did it quite light? Or we'll just click over here and give it a, a nice light blue color. <clears throat> so that's sorted out our colors. Next thing I want to do is give it a drop shadow around the edge here. So to add a drop shadow, with it selected, I'm going to come back to my selection tool. So to give it the drop shadow, 
Uh, with our text selected, we're just going to come up to filters and down to shadows and glows, and we can just drop down to drop shadow. So we click on this one. This will open up our uh, drop shadow dialog box. In here, we've got a few additional different options. We've got blur radius, which I've got set to very low at the moment, 0.2. This is again mainly because, like I said earlier, because the writing's quite small, I need my blur radius to be small. If I have my blur radius too big, um, in a previous uh, tutorial I think I had it set to 1.3. If we had it set to 1.3, it just wouldn't give the same effect. So depending on your scale and the size of your um, project, you need to adjust these accordingly. Horizontal offset and vertical offset is just where it positions the shadow that's dropped. I've got mine both set to zero, so it's dropping it directly down. So we get an even shadow all the way around, which just gives gives us a, a quite a nice effect. So if we turn on live preview to see what it actually looks like. So where I've got it set to zero and zero for the offsets, you can see that my drop shadow is even all the way around. Um, we've got it set to inner, so it drops it on the inside. If we had it set to outer, it would drop the shadow around the outside. We want it set to inner, so we do inner. So I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to apply that. So we click apply, and we can get rid of that. I'm going to bring my snake over, I'm going to position him roughly where we want him. I might rotate him slightly actually, and click on him again. I'm just going to scale him. I'm going to move him over a bit. Oh, I think that'll do us. So now we've got our snake positioned roughly where we want him over the top of our text. I'm going to give him a little shadow underneath. Now there's a couple of ways we could go about adding a shadow. We could use the drop shadow like we've just covered. The only difference is if we use a drop shadow this time, because the image is clipped, it applies the drop shadow to the edge of the original image. So we can fix this by grouping the snake on its own. So you take the clipped object, if you group it, you can then apply a drop shadow to the group. Alternatively, with a bit more work, we could do it like this. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate him. I'm then going to come up to Object, down to Clip, down to Release Clip. So we split out our two sections. So we've got our, our outline and we've got the photo. So I'm going to click off. I'm going to select the photo. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want it. All I want is the path that's set on the top. So if we now select the path, we can give it a fill colour, so I come down, paint in black. We can get rid of the stroke, so we can hold down shift, click on the X. And if we zoom in a bit so I can see what I'm doing, I'm just going to drag this down a touch so it creates a shadow underneath him. At the moment, our black is on top of our snake. We want it below the snake, so if we come up to the top, with the shadow selected, we can move it down below the snake. At the moment, it's very dark uh, and very crisp. So first thing I want to do is add a little bit of blur so it doesn't look quite as harsh. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. I think I'll just leave it as is. I might take a little bit of the, make it a little, little less blurred about there. And I think I'll leave that like that. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select the snake as well. So we've got both selected and then we can come up to group and group them together. So if we move them, they move as one. So when we clip an object, we can only um, apply one clip to any one object. One way we can get around this is to uh, group it. Now we can group it on its own, or in this case I've grouped it with the shadow. So we can just get on and add a clipping mask. One thing I do want to do first is because we're going to clip this snake so it's sat on top of our writing, I want to add shadows in here so it looks like the snake's going behind uh, these sections. So the way I'm going to do that is just come up, get the Bezier tool. So I'm going to add a couple of shapes here that we can blur to give a little bit of shadow either side of this um, centre section between our lettering. So I'm just coming to come over with the uh, Bezier pen selected. So all I'm going to do is draw a shape out over this section of, of our snake. One thing I do need to check first though is at the top here we've got shape. We've still got it set to triangle in. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to click on none to get rid of that. And I don't want the B spline on either. So I'm going to go back to our regular Bezier pen tool. And now we can just draw out a shape up here to cover our snake. Let's do the one going over this section as well. So with these two areas done, we can come over to our fill and stroke dialog box. I'm just going to add a little bit of blur to it. So what we're doing here is just creating a bit of shadow on our snake. 
to make it look like we're getting a drop shadow on top of our snake. We'll do the same to this one. So I'm going to come over, add a bit of blur. I'm just going to increase the size of this a little bit because it doesn't seem very dark on either side. I want to scale it from the center. So to scale from the center, I'm going to hold down shift and I want to keep the proportions the same. So I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger. And that should ho hopefully darken it up on top of the snake, which it seems to be doing. So now I've got those in place, I'm going to hold down shift, select the other one, select the snake, and then we can come up to group and group them all together. So we need to create a clipping mask now. So if we zoom back out a touch, I'm going to select my writing behind. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. Because I've duplicated it, it's stuck the new copy on top, which is what we want. So now if we actually just clip it, so if we hold down Shift, select our snake group, come up to Object and down to Clip and over to Set Clip, what happens is it clips out everything that's outside of our letters. So in this case, we've now lost the head and the tail and the section over the middle of the B. I want these to be left. So what we need to do is press Control Z to back step and we want to adjust our clipping mask. So we need to add a bit on over here, add a bit over the center of the B and add a bit to cover the head. So if we just come up and grab our rectangle tool, nice and simply, we're just gonna drag a box to cover that section, drag out a box to cover that section or a rectangle, I should be saying, a rectangle to cover that section. And we can hold down shift, I wanna get my selection tool actually, hold down shift, select each of the sections, select the text, and then we can come up to path, down to union, join them all together. Now, if we hold down shift, select the snake, select our clipping mask, and then we can come up to object, down to clip, and over to set clip. So before we finish with this example, I just wanna give you a reason why you might want to go to the extra effort to make this path um, to create the shadow. When we use drop shadows, they are literally just a drop shadow. You can't do anything else with it. But our shadow on the snake is actually a path in its own right, so we can manipulate that path. So if you wanted, for example, to make it look like the head was lifted up off the ground or the tail was lifted up, we could use our tweak tool um, to adjust the shadow. So because we've gone right through the whole process of creating our text, one way we can select a path from within groups is to use our nodes tool. So if we come up and click on our nodes tool, I'm just going to zoom in a bit so we can actually see what we're doing. As you hover over different items, you can see their path becomes highlighted. You can probably see it better between the letters. If you look up here, there's the shape that we've used for the shading. And as we go over the snake, you can see the shadow appear. So once we get that shadow appear, we're going to click on it. So now we've selected our shadow, we can come over, we can swap to our tweak tool, making sure we've got push parts of path in any direction selected at the top. What we're gonna do is come down and I'm just gonna grab hold of the head and just drag it down slightly. Just so we can make it look like it's lifted up a little bit off the ground, might need to move it back in a bit. And we can do the same again with the tail. We can come up, grab the tail, and just lower the shadow down slightly so it looks like the tail's lifted up. I think when we're doing this, the shadows are a little bit dark, so we would have to change the shadows slightly. So we could reduce the opacity of the shadow and reduce it down. And just by making these little tweaks to our shadow path, we can create the illusion that the snake is lifted up off of the ground. So that's that example done and dusted. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.